What's going on everyone? In today's video, we're going to go ahead and talk about everything that we know so far about the Series 7 Apple Watch because now we finally have a date when the pre-orders are going to start as well as the date when they're actually going to go ahead and get shipped out. So if you go right now on Apple's website, October 8th is when pre-orders are going to begin starting at 5 a.m. Pacific. It's said and rumored that there are going to be a limited supply which is why Apple decided to do this longer of a delay because the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro are already released and this is the first time we've seen such a massive gap from the release of the iPhone and the Apple Watch. And due to that there's a lot of leakers and sources and stuff like that reporting that the Apple Watch is going to be very hard to get your hands on this year. So hopefully this doesn't backfire or I'm informing you guys when pre-orders are going to start. So everybody's prepared. So hopefully I can get my hands on one and continue making these videos. If not, oh well, as long as you guys got your Apple Watch, you guys are all set. But yes, 5 a.m. October 8th is the date and they're going to ship out on October 15th. So usually it's the ETA time that consumers are going to start receiving their Apple Watch. So. Let's go ahead and go over the different models available because this year there actually is new updates. For example, like the Nike version is receiving a new loop band design and other goodies. And I guess we should also talk about if it's even worth considering an upgrade to the Series 7 or is it better going with another alternative like the SE Apple Watch. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my thoughts about the Series 3. Let's get started. So in case you miss it, this year, the Series 7 is redesigned slightly smoother and rounder than ever before. The display has a larger screen to body ratio, which looks awesome. It's said to fit a lot more text inside the screen, so it involves less scrolling to read your text. And it has this cool edge to edge illusion, kind of like what the Galaxy phones used to offer was that curved display. The Apple Watch Series 7 now has this option. Now in terms of colors, there's five new aluminum colors to choose from. There's the new green, which stands out a lot. A blue, which is like a very similar blue that you now found from what it looks like on the Sierra Blue iPhone 13 Pros. And then there's, of course, the product red, starlight, and no longer do we have space gray, we actually have midnight, which might be the one I'm gonna go ahead and personally get. Yes, there is a cellular version option available, and you could identify a cellular at Series 7 Apple Watch by looking at the digital crown if it has a red ring outline. It's a cellular version. And when you compare the display from like the blocky Series 3 to the Series 6 and the Series 7, you could definitely tell how much larger that display is. As Apple said, they reduced the borders by 70% which allows nearly 20% more screen real estate compared to the Series 6, which is already mind blowing because that display wasn't small to begin with. And yes, even the LTPO hardware, the always on display, is said to also be much brighter compared to the Series 6 and the 5. 70% brighter indoors when, you, when your wrist is down, according to Apple's website. So with this massive screen, the cool thing about this is now you actually will have access to a full row keyboard unlike before you had to download third-party apps even in today's update with watch os 8 we don't have the full row keyboard on like the series 6 it's a fine example you have to use scribbles or dictation still but the series 7 is going to actually have a full row keyboard which is quite nice and yes gestures are going to be supported on this keyboard as well so you can actually like scribble through the keyboard to type whatever you're trying to type into instead of manually going one by one with your finger by taking it off the screen you could just scribble on it so it's pretty nice nice to know that gestures are going to be supported and if you think it's going to be more fragile to get cracked and such since the display is much larger uh shockingly no the series 7 is said to be the most durable apple watch that apple has ever built so this is really interesting i'm really looking forward to testing this out so if you're concerned about cracking the display since it's much larger than ever before uh, it seems like Apple is really confident that that won't happen, at least easily that is. As it's crack resistant, it does have a IP6X certification, and it does have a water resistant rating up to 50 meters. It's able to accomplish this tougher display by having a thicker crystal on the top of the display which protects the OLED display that's underneath all of that. And yes, the Series 7 is still using an OLED display, which I have no complaints. It's worked perfectly fine in the past. And if you're concerned about burn-ins, my Series 1 still turns on and there's no burn-ins whatsoever, which is shocking. Now in terms of um, health centers, um, nothing new was added on the Series 7, unfortunately. We were expecting to see a blood, a, a glucose monitoring, I should say, 
but unfortunately the hardware that technology is still too new to be able to fit in something so small so maybe in the near future as many leakers were reporting last second that it's going to get delayed due to that because samsung was also working on something similar they weren't able to also pull that off but next year is likely we're finally going to go ahead and see that so in other words so with that said ecg is going to be built into the series 7 the heart rate sensor as well fall detection and of course the oxygen sensor that was found on the series 6 all that it's going to go to the series 7 so it's just going to continue now a massive improvement is the charge rates the series 7 is said to be able to charge 33 percent faster compared to the series 6 which is crazy because the series 6 already received a boost in charging rate the series 7 is much quicker as an eight minute charge will allow the apple watch to be able to last up to eight hours so that's perfect for sleep tracking. And it's able to accomplish this because no longer is the USB-A charging puck for the Apple Watch is gonna be included. It got swapped with a USB-C charging puck. So that definitely might have uh, enhanced the charging rate as well. And then of course you're gonna receive all the other Apple Series 6 functions onto the Series 7, like the ability to track your workouts with auto workout detection, uh, listen to music. Apple Pay, you know, all that good stuff that we love about the Apple Watch, answer phone calls and reply to text messages, receive your push notifications from your phone to your wrist, all right here in a nice convenient area on your, on your wrist instead of having to take off your phone, you know, all the benefits of a smartwatch. So in terms of pricing, yes, the Series 7 is gonna continue to have the same retail price, MSRP price that we've seen on the Series 6. So it's gonna start at $399 for the smaller size version. And that smaller size is gonna have a 41 millimeter display size. And then the next size of that will be the 45. So it's one millimeter larger than the Series 6. And then if the price tag carries on from the 6 to the 7, it's going to be identical. So for that larger size version, it's going to cost $427. And it could cost even more depending on the watch band that you attach if you use Apple's Creative Style. If you swap stuff to with the solo loop band as a fun example, I could go up to 479. And so if you go with the Nike version, they should come with the same standard price. Now the only limitation with the Nike version is that you have less body colors, the colors to choose from for your aluminum body. And if you'd like to know what those colors are, it's basically this. Midnight looks to be the standard black color substitute for the space gray for the Nike version. And Starlight looks like it's gonna be the one that's gonna replace the silver color. It's kind of like a, almost like a pinkish skin tone. I don't know how to describe the color, but it, this is basically how it looks like. So it's no longer like a silver silver, it's more like an off grayish skin tone silver. So these are the only two colors that are gonna be available for the Nike version Series 7 Apple Watch. Now the pros of going with the Nike version Series 7 Apple Watch is that you get access to some exclusive additional watch faces. So you'll have all the regular watch faces that's available on the standard, the regular Sport Series 7, but you also have the Nike watch faces and some Nike features. So all the Nike watch faces that was available on the older Apple Watches are all gonna be available on the Series 7. And then you get these cool retro looking this watch faces that really do utilize the edge to edge display then you also have the built-in nike club app installed on the apple watch with the series 7 if you go with the nike version you can download this separately on the series 7 standard it's a dedicated app you just install but with the nike it's, it comes pre-installed which all it really is is just a work outdoor workout running tracking app and then the new Apple Watch bands that are gonna become available for the Nike version. It's basically very similar to like the current one. This is one of them right here that I have on. It has a reflective yarn. It's the Velcro loop one, super comfortable and really breathable. Only con is it takes a while to allow water to evaporate and dry out in case you get a, a wet. That's the only con, but now it looks like they have the reflective yarn still onto the loop style one, but it actually, actually says Nike as you can see right here and then you have the other one was the multi holes this just allows air to breathe through just keep your wrists a lot cooler and keep everything breathable but they also come in a new color as you see it has like a midnight theme on the blue one and then there's this pink one I'm sure very positive we're gonna go ahead and see a lot more as soon as pre-order starts and then of course you have the most expensive one of them all the Hermans they also receive new watch faces. Still, it's gonna have the nice, expensive stainless steel body, so it has that glossy, premium feel. But they're also introducing new bands to choose from for them as well this year. And similar to like the Nike edition, uh, they're gonna have their own exclusive watch faces as well. 
And as a quick refresher, if you want to know how much the Hermins will start, uh, they usually start at $1,200. So they're very pricey, limited to those few. <laughs> now, if you ask me which one I'm going to go ahead and personally get, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Nike version. I just like the fact that, due to the fact that I always go with the dark color anyways. So instead of going with the standard midnight sport Apple watch, I'm going to go ahead and get that same body color and swap it with a different band later on and have more watch faces to choose from so I can really customize my device. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and go with the Nike version because they cost the same and it's the same aluminum body with the color that I'm personally getting. I didn't do it unfortunately for the Series 6 due to the fact that they offered this new midnight color, midnight blue. And blue is my favorite color, but this new blue color is, doesn't seem like it's the same midnight color that it's that was available for the Series 6. So all in all, if you're upgrading from a Series 6, personally, as time making this video, based off everything that we know about the Series 6, uh, Series 7 Apple Watch, it's not really worth upgrading. The processor is still the same; it's just relabeled. So performance, we're not going to see a massive increase in performance. Same goes for battery life, but you do take advantage of that quicker charge rate. So really the only reason you want to upgrade from the Series 6 to the 7 is if you really just want to have the latest and greatest Apple Watch. That's really the only reason I can see why somebody may want to go with the 6 or the 7. Now if you have a 4, I think you waited long enough, upgrading to a Series 7 wouldn't really hurt. And I guess the same can possibly apply to the Series 5. Now, if you own an SE Apple Watch, honestly, you're perfectly fine to this very day. Even today, while knowing that the Series 7 is coming out, I still think the SE Apple Watch is still the best value Apple Watch available in the market. For anybody who just wants to have an Apple Watch and have the ability to track everything from health, fitness, and take advantage of the Apple Payless method of, of Apple Pay. And then as for the Series 3, uh, that Apple Watch was released back in 2017. Lots has changed. I'm unsure why Apple continues to sell the Series 3 brand new, even in 2021. I'm very concerned about users that are still using that Apple Watch. I do own a Series 3 and I kind of want to put it on and just experience it to see if it's even something somebody may want to consider. But in my opinion, the specs that it has, it's really slow. I see the Series 3 kind of like a really old device and it really is to the point where it's going to struggle, I believe, on even watchOS 8. I'm going to go ahead and test that out though in a future video if the Series 3 is even worth considering buying brand new in 2021. All in all, there you go. You're now in the loop. You now know everything there is to know about the Series 7 Apple Watch. Hopefully I was able to keep this video informative so you can make your own financial decision if you want to upgrade or hold off or just continue waiting until more users get their hands on their Apple Watch. The embargo breaks tomorrow, so I th you're going to start seeing a lot more Apple Watch Series 7 content coming out all over the internet these next few days. So stay tuned for those videos. Now, if you are on the latest watchOS 8 firmware update, you want to see what new features was added, some things to change on your Apple Watch, you can go ahead and watch that video over there as I go through all the hidden features, some awesome tips and tricks that I discovered. And then that video next to that one, that's just a video YouTube's recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.